Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I am back with a unboxing and first impressions for the brand new Neo Geo Arcade Stick Pro. Now, full disclosure, this was sent to me by a rep for SNK, and I'll be honest with you guys, I was a little surprised to get this offer because, in case you don't remember, I wasn't exactly blown away by the Neo Geo Classic Mini that came out a couple years ago. I ended up being kind of disappointed with it, but they gave me the opportunity to take a look at this and I jumped at the chance because I heard that they took all the feedback that they got from YouTubers and poured it into this device here. So we're gonna see if that's the case. So what exactly is this thing? Well, it's advertised as an all-in-one kind of pro-level control stick that has built-in games. It actually comes with 20 fighting games, but it's very flexible because you can just use it as a dedicated console or you can attach it to your computer. You can even use it on say an Android device and it supports the Neo Geo Classic Mini. So you can use this as a controller to the, the Neo Geo Mini, and I'm gonna show you how that works. Also, it currently retails for $130 on Amazon, and I'm gonna put a link down in the video description below if you wanna check it out for yourself. And like I mentioned, it has 20 built-in fighting games, and what's kinda cool about this, at least they've hinted at it, uh, it'll depend on when this video comes out, if they've actually announced it, but it has the potential to actually add more games to it. So it comes with 20 fighting games, but in the future, it could potentially have, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of, of games that are supported with it. And as we pull out of the box here, right off the bat, it just feels very heavy. It feels quality, it really does. Um, it's got a nice weight to it. It weighs probably, I would guess, maybe under five pounds. Um, also included in the box is a printed manual. It also comes with a USB charging cable for power. And then it has some pads here that you can stick underneath it if you want. I'm actually gonna do that so that way it doesn't slip around. And there is this little adapter for you to use if you wanna connect it to the Neo Geo Classic Mini, which I will be doing a little bit later. Now I know you're dying to find out was SNK able to make clicky thumbsticks? Because as we all know, they are very hard to make. And I'm happy to report that yes, the clicky thumbstick is back. And that was really one of my first complaints of the Neo Geo Classic Mini is that I just missed the clicky micro switches in the controller. That's what Neo Geos were known for. I loved the precision. And so it's cool that they have that back. You'll also notice that there are eight face buttons and there's a nice feel to them. Notice though that the colors, um, the main mapping is actually not like the standard arcade. They're stacked. So the red, green, yellow, and blue are stacked. Some people may not like that by default, they come this way, but the good news is you can actually change the mapping in the games. And seeing how this is designed to be used, not only with Neo Geo games, but also on your PC or perhaps other consoles, well, it's nice that these extra buttons are there. And again, you can map them. If we walk around the device, on the top of it, you have a USB-C power in. So they provided a cable for that, uh, but you do need the wall adapter. So you're gonna have to use the one that came with your phone. There's also a standard size HDMI out. And next to that is a USB port. Now they label that as a controller in port, but I suspect that that is also where you would upgrade the firmware and potentially add games in the future. On the bottom, you have two places where you can plug in the Neo Geo mini controllers. So you'll see you have one there for player one and player two. And then there is a uh, 3.5 millimeter audio jack. So if you wanna use headphones, you can. And then on the side, you have a turbo button. You've got options, select and start. And then you have these, these little toggle switches here. And that's where you can put this into the mode of either being a dedicated console with video out. So you play the games that are built onto it, or you can switch it over into another mode where you can attach it directly to the Neo Geo Classic Mini. And it has a bunch of different options here. And so it explains all that in the manual. 
On the bottom, there's not much you need to mess around with, but you will notice that there is a plug here. And if you pull that out, that's where it allows you to swap the controller ball top if you want. So if you wanted say a bat style, as opposed to like just the ball type, you could do that here. So let's go ahead and hook this up and let's check out the games that are built into it. Right off the bat, I noticed that it is outputting clearer than the classic mini, which is a good thing because that was my other major complaint about that device is that it was low res and it didn't need to be because the output here is actually 720p. So it should look fairly sharp on a standard HD television. And as you can see here, it does. And we're gonna get into the games themselves, but right off the bat, I noticed that yes, it definitely looks better than the Neo Geo Classic Mini. And then as for the games, well, you see a bunch of fighting games, as I mentioned, and there are a bunch of King of Fighter titles here. You of course have the Fatal Fury games. You've got Mark of the Wolves. You got some Samurai Showdown games, uh, Art of Fighting, World Heroes, uh, Ninja Master, Last Blade. Um, so yeah, there, there's a bunch of fighting games in here. If you are fans of that, you're gonna love this. I guess for me, and maybe, Maybe I'm wrong, but it would have been cool if they would have also included some of the other non-fighting games. I would have loved to seen some shooters on here, uh, you know, or maybe a metal slug. Now let's go ahead and jump into the options. So the first one there is language, and that is where you set the language for the menu itself. It's not for the games. Underneath that, you have screen size, which is very important. And what that really means is the aspect ratio and how much zoom that you are, you know, how much that you're comfortable with or how much you want in your particular setup. For me, I usually like the, the four by three, the kind of original aspect ratio, but you could stretch it if your TV is small or if you just want it to fill the entire screen. Under quality is where you can really dial in exactly how you want the picture to look. Now by default, out of the box, it comes with smooth scaling turned on. And that's where it takes the pixels and it kind of smooths them out and makes them, I guess, a little bit more modern looking. Some people like that. It's not really my favorite. So one of the first things that I do is turn on pixel scaling because that's the old school style I like. But if you're into scan lines, you have three different options here, including transverse scan lines, longitudinal, and also 45 degree scan lines. Now I'm gonna show you all of these running in the games, but I will say to give you a little bit of a preview is that it seems to add scan lines to the smoothing option. So just be aware, it seems to be mixing those two together, but I'll give you examples. Back in the main menu, you can set the volume for the headphones and then underneath that is system. So check this out. Under system, you have something called unlock. Now, not 100% sure what that is yet, but I believe it's where you're going to unlock more games in the future. If you click it right now, just out of the box, it says no external storage device detected. However, you could plug in a USB uh, device in there and it'll detect it, but as far as I can tell, I can't figure out any way to actually see, have it see ROMs. So not 100% sure what they're gonna do with this yet. Same thing with system upgrade. If you click on it right now, it basically says that it doesn't see any external storage. So I believe that maybe SNK is gonna sell optional USB add-ons for this device, which would be pretty cool. And then back at the main menu, I do wanna point out this question mark here, and that is basically just the manual for this device. And because there's so many different things that this can do, I am glad that they built it into the actual device itself so you don't have to go try to find the manual. It's all right here on the screen. The first game I wanna check out is the King of Fighters 97. I just picked it randomly. And I think a lot of you are probably gonna to wanna to do this as well, is that you can try it with the stacked buttons, but again, you can very easily go under settings. So you hit, the, the button on the outside of the console itself. And then that brings up the menu system. And in there, you can very, very quickly set all the buttons to just the top row. And then you save it to its settings file or whatever. It's all handled internally. Um, the only thing is that you have to do this for every single game. So every time you launch it for the first time, you're gonna wanna go in here and configure it if that's what you prefer. And then playing the game, Feels good. I mean, I'm sure that this is emulation, of course. Uh, I'm not sure about the details of the hardware, but 
it feels really great playing this game. Uh, now, this particular game right here, you're seeing it's it's in four by three. And of course I'm showing the pixels because that's how I prefer it. And then here is the King of Fighters 2002. And so basically I'm gonna jump into a bunch of these fighters and uh, just show you a, a random sampling of them. So you can kind of get an idea as to what they look like and how they run. So that's obviously four by three aspect ratio with just the, the pixel scaling, but let's go ahead and go into the menu and then let's turn on smooth and let you see the difference. Now, man, you know, it's funny because I actually don't hate that look. Um, I can see why they made this the default because I think depending on who you are and what you're used to, you might prefer this look here. I, I know I'm probably gonna get crucified for that in the comments, but there are times when I turn on smoothie and I'm like, yeah, that doesn't look half bad. Another thing I wanna point out that can be important is mode or region. And so a lot of these games, if you go under options, you'll see this thing says mode there and you can choose basically Japanese, sometimes Spanish uh, or English, or it'll say USA. And of course that will obviously change all of the text in the game, but sometimes it also changes the blood. So just be aware that if it doesn't look quite right when you boot it up or if it's in Japanese or whatever, or if it's not playing or looking the way that you would expect, go under options and swap it from Japan to say USA or whatever would normally be your region. And now I'm gonna run through the scanline options because I know some of you out there really care about this stuff. So there is the transverse scan lines and you'll notice again that it doesn't look that pixelated. It's got the scan lines, but notice that it seems to have a bit of smoothing there. I just wanna point it out because some of you might care. Now, if you go to longitudinal scan lines, I think that's how you pronounce that word, longitudinal, I don't know. Anyways, and then of course, 45 degree scan lines. It's cool that they have three different options for people who want them. I'm not sure how accurate these are or if people really care, but the options are there if you want them. Me personally, I always come back to just those clear, crisp, beautiful pixels. That's what I like. Now let's go ahead and connect this to the Neo Geo Classic Mini and use it as an external controller. This should, in theory, make me happy because like I mentioned, I was disappointed that the, the Mini didn't have the clicky little joystick. So we're gonna use this instead. And the way that this works is that you open up the bottom and then there is a USB cable that comes out and then you just plug in that little adapter and then you plug it into the side of the Classic Mini there. And then on the side of the device, there's that little toggle switch right there. And once you do that, you'll notice that it blinks green on the top. That tells you what mode it's in. And then from here on out, you can use this in the Mini Classic. This is where you can really see the difference in the video quality. Again, I use the exact same capture device, the Elgato here, and both of these are 720p, but as you can see here on the Mini, it's just a softer image. It's not as crisp at all. But I will admit that the controller works great, and it's really fun to use this with some of my favorite shooters. This just feels so natural. This game here is Blazing Star, and again, a game that I come back to time and time again. I really enjoy this game. Great graphics, and with this device, with the Arcade Controller Pro, it, it works fine. Here's me using the controller with Metal Slug 3. And again, I just kind of wish that the Arcade Pro came with some of these games because these games are classics. Maybe they didn't want to compete with the Mini. I'm not really sure why they decided to leave off, you know, any games that weren't fighting games. But, you know, obviously it was a deliberate design choice, but it's a little bit disappointing because these are so much fun. And here is Twinkle Star Sprites. Again, another really fun shooter. And this controller works great with it. So what do I think? Well, I'm happy that SNK took the feedback that they got from the classic mini from reviewers and YouTubers like me and really tried to improve this Arcade Stick Pro. You can really tell that they took that feedback and tried to make it better. The video quality to your TV is definitely an improvement. The buttons are much improved and full size and fully configurable. And yes, that thumbstick is clicky as it should be. 
It works as a standalone arcade controller, both for the mini as well as, say, your PC. And it seems like the build quality is pretty good. Now, I'm pretty sure that it's doing some sort of emulation on the inside. I haven't really torn it apart or dug into it deeper. I'm sure a bunch of YouTube channels like GameStack and My Life in Gaming will probably tear this thing apart and do a bunch of latency tests. I'm very curious to see those. And I'm gonna continue using it for now in my game room because again, it is so flexible. But love to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Are you interested in picking one of these up? Do you think the $130 price tag is a fair price for this? What are your thoughts on it? What games would you like to see them release for it? And at what price should those be? That's gonna be a big question mark that as of the making of this video, we just don't know. Like I mentioned, if you wanna check it out for yourself, I'll put a link down in the video description below to Amazon. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and take care.